working on these aluminum motor mounts. It's kind of a couple of different vehicles put together because it's uh, for a an Alfa Romeo that's being built for a weight to ratio race class and so it's getting an S2000 engine. So I'm making, uh, modifying these engine brackets uh, so they'll fit the new combo. Some of them, this already had a couple of holes drilled in it. I think one of them might have been for locating but I'm not going to necessarily use those. I actually filled it in on this plate just because of where the weld is I felt better that it that it's filled in. I'm gonna take this piece and grind a like a quarter inch bevel in it just for a weld bevel. And then this will fit this plate like that. And this goes like this. So I'm gonna get creative and get weld where I can get weld. Uh, where I have an opportunity to put a, put a deeper bevel for more penetration, I'm gonna do that. I have this saber tooth flat disc that is ceramic alumina, so it'll work for aluminum, and I'm gonna flatten this out and then put a couple of grooves and then move on to the welding. All right, here I'm gonna grind a bevel onto each side of this piece. With normal flap discs uh, you'll get a lot of loading up but you can see with this uh, aluminum or uh, what is it ceramic alumina it kind of deflects the the material so it doesn't suck into it and it's doesn't have carbides in it so it's not going to contaminate the weld which is something you're going to deal with if you use a conventional grinding wheel so it's kind of got the best of both worlds it's a flap disc and, uh, and it doesn't contaminate and it doesn't load up you get nice, clean bevels. Uh, so now, I'm also going to sand this flat where I had filled in the bosses earlier. The next step is taking this uh, stainless steel crimped end brush and wiring the surfaces that I'm going to weld to clean the oxide off the aluminum and then also uh, to clean out any impurities before I start welding. Especially with uh, pieces that have been machined, one of the sneaky things is machining oil will really jack up a load. So sometimes I'll even take some dye remover uh, and spray it down and uh, wipe it up and that'll take care of some of that machinist fluid too. Alright, now the first set I have tacked together, actually no, I'm just kidding, I don't have them tacked together. I have them clamped together, uh, located about where they should be, and now I'm going to tack them up.
All right, I'm using my Miller Dynasty 280 for this. I have the amps maxed out. Then I have negative and positive, both at 280. The balance I have is 75, and right now I'm running the frequency at 165. Let's see how that works out. I'm using uh, 4043 on this project because it's a bit more ductile, uh, less less cracking than you get in uh, 5556, 5356. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do to put these uh, these pieces together since they're gonna see some some uh, work hardening and some vibrancy and some bouncing being and uh, motor mounts. So figured that's the way to go. I'm using all of the Dynasty's 280 amps on this. And uh, you might have noticed I went forward with the torch a little bit without adding any filler. That was kind of a trick from the old transformer days when uh, you needed to preheat the, the material, but um, you could kind of just use your torch and without giving it any filler, kind of go up and down it, clean it and heat it up. With this, it doesn't necessarily need clean, but help put a little more heat into the material. I turned up the gas flow a bit and stuck the tungsten out a little bit farther to try to get into this little nook right here. Maybe I can weld all the way around it.
right, so here's the motor mounts all welded up. I clamped them down while they cooled down so they'd hopefully stay flat. Here's that one. them up they touch up one of the corners there and they should be good to go